Today we're going to answer the question whether it's still worth it to get the 5800 X3D in 2024 or if the 7800 X3D is a better choice. We'll take a look at some benchmarks to see what's the difference in performance but we'll also look into the availability of each platform and their respective price. So let's quickly start with performance difference. I've tested a couple of games and apologies if some of them seem to be a bit old but that's the best way for me to compare the performance of the new platform versus the old one. In both cases the CPUs were paired with an MSI 4090 Supreme with stock settings. Both CPUs were also undervolted to offer best performance and cooling capabilities. In case of 5800X3D I was using Patriot 32GB 3600MHz CL18 Viper Steel while for the 7800X3D it was Corsair Vengeance 32GB 6000Hz CL30. Let's start with one of my favorite games ever which is Red Dead Redemption 2. In 1080p and favor quality settings the 5800X3D was able to push 214 FPS 1% low was at 125 and 0.1% at 99. The 7800X3D on average was able to push 212 FPS with 1% low at 115 and 0.1 at 93. It seems that for 1080p there's very little difference in performance. The two frames on average is basically margin error. For 1440p the 5800X3D achieved 194 FPS with 121 FPS at 1% lows and 98 FPS at 0.1% lows. The 7800X3D got 190 FPS on average with 146 FPS and 1% lows and 102 at 0.1% 1 lows. Again, very similar results for both CPUs which could mean is the GPU that's doing most of the work here. In Assassin's Creed Valhalla at max settings we see 196 FPS on average with the 5800X3D while the 1% lows are at 139 and 0.1% 1 lows are at 100. The 7800X2D at the same settings is able to push 218 FPS on average with 1% lows at 116 and 0.1% lows at 71. Here we already see some slight advantage of the newer platform, on average it's around 11% faster. Bumping the resolution to 1440p, the 5800X2D pushes out 167 FPS on average with 1% low being at 123 and 0.1 at 92. The 7800X3D is again slightly faster, the average FPS is at 186, the 1% lows are at 108 and 0.1% lows at 71. We see the same difference in average performance, 11%. In Cyberpunk at 1080p and max settings without ray tracing and DLSS we get 186 FPS on average with the 5800X3D, 1% is at 103 and 0.1% at 84. The 7800X3D achieves roughly the same result with 182 FPS on average with 104 for 1% and 88 for 0.1% and the difference is more or less the same for 1440p. The 5800X3D average is at 140 while the 7800X3D pushes out 147 frames on average, so around 5% difference. Something interesting happens however when we max out the settings and turn the LSS on. At 4K resolution with everything cranked to max and ray tracing at overdrive we get 67 FPS on average with the 5800X3D and 72 on average with the 7800X3D. Looks like the increased frequency that comes with the 7800X3D also helps with the LSS, a 9% increase in performance. In Overwatch at 1080p settings with ultra details the 5800X3D gets on average 494 FPS, the 1% is at 299 and 0.1% is at 233. This is very similar to 7800X3D which averages at 510 FPS which is just a 3% increase. This seems to be game engine limit as at 1440p the 5800X3D averages at 450 FPS with 1% lows at 274 and 0.1% at 180 and the 7800X3D averages at 470 with 1% at 270 and 0.1% at 192. This means that the difference here increases to over 4% which is still not a lot. At 4K the 5800X3D pushes out 427 FPS on average, 1% is at 252 while 0.1% is at 184. The 7800X3D still keeps the same 4% advantage on average as it delivers 446 FPS while 1% is at 292 and the 0.1% is at 191. In Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 
We are really starting to see the advantage of the new platform. The 5800X3D at 1080p and balance settings pushes out 315 FPS on average with 1% low at 165 and 0.1% low at 54. The 7800X3D manages to get 379 FPS on average, 1% lows are at 232 and 0.1% lows at 184. This means that at 1080p, the 7800X3D manages to deliver 20% more frames on the same GPU. At 1440p, the 5800X3D averages at 284 FPS with 1% lows at 210 and 0.1% at 120. The 7800X3D manages to get 324 FPS on average with 1% lows at 220 and 0.1% at 180. So that 1440p difference is still substantial, around 14%. At 4K, the difference is even smaller. The 5800X3D averages at 201 FPS with 1% lows at 148 and 0.1% lows at 29. The 7800X3D averages at 222 FPS while the 1% lows are at 160 and 0.1 at 146. So the 7800X3D offers much smoother experience while being around 10% faster. So these are the benchmarks, but what about costs of the AM4 versus AM5 platform? The 5800X3D costs around $370 and you can find it quite often on sale for less than $350. The AM4 motherboards with B550 chips go for around $100 depending on which version and manufacturer you choose. The DDR4 RAM you will need to pay around $80 for a set of 32 gigs. The rest of the components can be the same for both CPUs, so we'll just skip them. This means that the AM4 platform costs around $530 for the CPU, motherboard and RAM. The 7800X3D starts at around $400 with the prices going as low as $375 on sale, which means it costs more or less the same as the 5800X3D. A B650 motherboard, depending on the manufacturer and option, costs around $150 on average. The DDR5 memory will set you back around $100. This means that the AM5 platform costs $650 and if the CPU is on sale, you can save another $25 and get the total price down to $625. So the difference in price is around $100 on average, not a lot, but also those $100 could be spent elsewhere like on a fancier GPU, more storage or better cooling. Of course, 7800X3D is a much newer product and the whole AM5 platform should offer better longevity and the ability to upgrade to new Ryzen CPUs once they are released. And I think this is a great way to summarize it. The 7800X3D and AM5 platform is a great choice for someone who is building a new gaming rig or is skipping generations and wants a bit more longevity and future-proofing, as the price difference is not that big. However, if you're still on AM4 platform and looking to upgrade to a better gaming CPU, then the 5800X3D is a really good value, as in most cases it can keep up even with the 4090. And that's it for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found it useful and helpful. I'm Laser, and I'll see you in the next one.